welcome back. This is another episode of Cooking or Something Like It. We're going to do something a little different today. Normally we do entrees. Uh, this is more of an appetizer, which I figured we would do for Thanksgiving if you wanted to do something that was a little fancier as an app for a Thanksgiving dinner. So, what are we doing today? We're going to do prawns provencal. Now, if you don't know what a prawn is, a prawn is a shrimp, except it's a whole shrimp. So if you've never actually seen what your shrimp look like before the tails are removed, they look like that, all right? Legs, head, and everything. Now, the reason to buy them as a prawn is you get more flavor. When you buy something before it's been cut up, and if you hear a slurping sound in the background, that is my dog clearly adding to the ambiance of the video, and he'll be walking out of the picture here shortly. But, so when you buy something whole like this, it preserves a lot more of the flavor. So I'm going to do one of these. I'm going to walk you all the way through preparing one. As you can see behind me, I have a bunch of others prepared. Once I show you how to do one, we're going to take a short break. I'm going to prepare the rest of them. We're going to throw them in the oven, and then we're going to come back and show you how to finish this. So let's get started. Now, you've eaten shrimp before. I'm sure of it. So you know that the shrimp that you eat is pretty much the tail of this crustacean. So what you want to do is right behind the body, and the body is a solid piece. Right behind that, you want to cut through that. Now, the head of the prawn is not junk, okay? You can take these and make a really excellent shrimp broth. Like you would do if you had chicken bones to make a chicken broth, beef bones to make a, a beef broth, save these pieces. You trust me on this. It makes an excellent stock, right? You can see here, here are all the heads and shells from the ones I already did. And I'm going to do the same with this one. So we're going to take this, we're going to crack it at the tail, and we are going to take the legs and the shell off. Now I try to leave the tail piece on. If it comes off, it's not the end of the world. So don't stress about that too much. But try to leave it on. It's a little easier if people want to grab a hold of it and they want to eat them separately, which a lot of times they do. All right, now, so here we have what you would traditionally know as a shrimp. We're going to butterfly these. Now, you've probably had butterfly shrimp before, and you've probably never really thought about how they do that. So I'm going to show you. So we're going to take the shrimp, we're going to turn it upside down, okay? We're going to make an incision along the base of that, and we're going to cut it almost all the way through, right, till it folds out like that. Now, on both sides, you're going to find this nice little black string, which is actually the shrimp's digestive tract. So, as gross as that is, pull that out, right, open it up just like that, okay? See that? You've got a nice butterfly shrimp there. Now, we're going to make our breading for the shrimp. So. We're going to take a bowl, we're going to add a little bit of almond flour. Now, the reason I'm using almond flour, we try to eat on the lower carb side of things. Almond flour is low carb, low carb. it's gluten free, if you are interested in that. Um, you can use breadcrumbs for this, you don't have to go with just almond flour. But, alright, so, some almond flour, mm. we're going to take some of our dried herbs. Now this is a combination of dried oregano and dried thyme. Right, put a little bit of that in, take a little bit of salt, and again here, if you've watched past videos, this is my mortar and pestle, I have ground up some fresh black peppercorns. I did this ahead of time just to save a little bit of time. So we're going to add that together, we're going to taste this, we're going to toss it, we're going to take this shrimp tail, and we're going to toss them real good in there. Right? Shake that off, you'll get it looks like this, you've got breadcrumbs or almond flour in my case on the shrimp tail. We're going to take this guy and we're going to set him right there. Now, the steps that I just did, I have already done with these other shrimp. I have about a pound and a half of shrimp here. You can adjust this recipe accordingly. Um, actually, this guy could use a little more breading there, so we'll do that. You want to make sure they're covered good, because when you bake them, <clears throat> if they're not really well breaded, they're not going to brown. They will taste totally fine, but you're just going to get shrimp on the outside with no breading. It's more aesthetic than anything else. So, now we are going to make the stuffing. Traditional shrimp provencal uses breadcrumbs in the stuffing. You 
if you're watching this video, you know that we are not very traditional. So I'm going to do a little bit different take on this. I'm going to use hot Italian sausage instead of breadcrumbs. If you want to use breadcrumbs, simply just substitute breadcrumbs for the sausage I'm going to use. Now, these are sausage links. They're just, I bought them at the store. I don't know what brand they are, but they're sausage links. So they have a casing on them. If you're going to use this to stuff something, just take the casing off. Right? Just make a slit on the side, and now you've got bulk sausage. Right? Do this with three of these. Because that's really all these are. Is somebody made ground sausage and stuffed it into a casing. Alright. If you can see me talking to somebody, that's my son behind the camera attempting to talk to the dog, which I'm sure you can all hear. So. a little bit. Okay. So we've got our ground sausage in a bowl. If you can see that, right? To this, we're going to add our fresh herbs. And I'll put all the quantities and the ingredients on the blog, so don't worry about it right now. So I've got herbs. I've got about a quarter cup of chopped onion. Put that in. All right? A little bit of salt and pepper. and about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of garlic, depending on how many shrimp you're gonna stuff, okay? We're gonna mix this together, all right? Now, if you're using breadcrumbs, you're gonna to wanna to add a little bit of olive oil to this. I'm using sausage, throwing sausage on the floor, actually. I'm using sausage, so I'm not gonna add extra olive oil because the grease or the fat in the sausage when it cooks, will give me all the, the flavoring, the fat flavoring that I need. But if you're using breadcrumbs, put a little bit of olive oil in right now to just give it a little more moisture, okay? All right. We've got pretty much a sausage mixture here. Now, to this, let me take a step back. If you're using breadcrumbs, right now you should pause. Give this about five minutes for the olive oil, the herbs to kind of moisten, and everything to kind of come together, all right? All right, now to this, I've got fresh cilantro. We're gonna dump that in. Okay, now this is totally optional. This is cayenne pepper. If you don't want any spice, don't put the cayenne pepper in. I'm gonna put just a little bit in, just to give it a little zing. Here, this is grated Parmesan cheese. Don't use the powdered Parmesan. It has a lot of fillers in it, and it's not going to give you as much of a cheesy flavor as this is going to give you. Seriously, trust me on this. This is real. I bought a block of Parmesan and just mixed this up. All right, so we're going to put a couple healthy... I mean, we like cheese, right? So, All right, now we're going to mix all this together. And it's going to take you a little bit. Like, there's a lot of cheese, there's a lot of dry ingredients here. So, you know, mix this all, squish it together, press it together. You'll get it. So if you're doing sausage, this is going to look like, kind of like a meatball when you're done. Okay. Just fold it over in your hands like this. It'll keep incorporating that cheese inside. All right. So, there we have it. Pretty much sausage, cilantro, Parmesan cheese, our oregano and thyme, salt and pepper, a little bit of cayenne, all right? Now, as you can see here, I have quite a few of these. <clears throat> I'm gonna stuff one, and then we're gonna take a little break while I do the rest of them and pop them in the oven. Before you really get into this, heat your oven up to 475 degrees. These are going to cook fast, okay? So we're going to take one shrimp. We're going to take a little bit of our stuffing. Kind of make it into a ball like that. Press it on top. 
It doesn't have to be gorgeous. It's just going to taste good. Stuffed butterfly shrimp, okay? Place that on a tray. Now, I'm going to do the rest of these real quick, and then I'm going to pop them in a 475 degree oven for about six to eight minutes. You'll know because the shrimp will be fully colored and the sausage will be cooked. And I'll be right back to show you how to finish this, and we're going to prepare a sauce to dip these in. Be right back. Okay, so all of the shrimp are in the oven. They're cooking right now. They've got about a minute or two left. I'm going to whip up a quick sauce here. Now keep in mind, this is one example. You don't have to use this. This will taste good, I promise. This, this is a, a very simple, easy sauce that will taste good. But if you don't like spicy sweet Thai chili or sour cream isn't your thing, feel free to experiment with this. Because they're shrimp, the old cocktail sauce works great too. So let me just show you something real simple here. I've got sour cream. And for the record, sour cream in a squeezable bag is the greatest invention ever. It lasts for a long time. And you don't have to buy it all the time because it goes bad. All right, so a little bit of sour cream, probably about three quarters, half a cup. If you've watched this, you know that I don't measure anything. In fact, even when I write the recipes for you guys, I'm just guessing. So just keep that in mind. All right, fish sauce. You guys have seen me use this before. This is essentially boiled down fish concentrate. No, that sounds gross. But trust me on this, it's very salty, so you don't use a lot, but it adds a ton of that umami flavor, that real savory flavor. It's um, reminiscent of anchovies, but it's not going to impart an anchovy taste. Keep that in mind. So we're going to give it a few dashes. This works really well a lot of times when you're using any kind of seafood because it pairs real well with it. All right, we've got some lemon juice here. Now, normally, I would use fresh lemons. It's kind of an off-season for lemons, and they're really expensive, but... This is not, so just put a little bit of that in. And then you've seen me use this before. This is the Ma Poi Sweet Thai Chili. This works great. It's, it's a real nice condiment. In fact, if you wanted to use just this, it would work great. All right, so we're gonna put some of this in. We're gonna mix it up. Now, if you want something it's got a little bit of spice to it, throw a little Tabasco in here. Or a little Sriracha. Actually, Sriracha would probably be my choice in this one. All right, we're just gonna get a nice cream sauce here. That's good. And don't be afraid to taste stuff you're cooking. I realize I dipped my finger in it, but I'm also the one eating this stuff. But don't be afraid to take a spoon or a fork and just dip it in and taste it. Don't just guess. Especially since if you don't you're making it. If, if I put something in a recipe that says salt and pepper to taste, it means taste it. I'm, seriously. So I'm going to take a little bit of salt because that fish sauce, not quite as much salt as I would like, and a little bit of my pepper for my mortar and pestle here. And we're going to give this one final little stir. Okay. Let's take these guys back here. Got a fancy little ramekin here, you know, we're fancy. Okay, set this over here. We are going to grab one of our fancy plates. Alright. Now, you see that? Sausage is cooked, the shrimp is butterflied, they're sitting real nice on top there. You can see that real good in the camera, right Julian? Yeah. Okay. You need a better. All right. Take that there. Now, take these guys. We're going to do... So if you're doing this for like a holiday, just a presentation idea for you. Obviously, you can certainly just eat them off the pan, which is what we would normally do. This guy over here. Take 
with that, set it in the middle, and there you go. You've got a very fancy appetizer. Now obviously I only put six on here. You could fill in the gaps. You could use a much bigger plate. You have a really fancy, nice quality appetizer for Thanksgiving dinner or any day of the week. We'll see you next time. Check out our webpage, check out our Facebook page, give us a like and share the video if you like it. Until next time.